Hey everybody, how's it going? So I wanna be clear before I get started with this video that we are in the realm of conspiratorial and conspiracy theory-like stuff. I just wanna be clear and upfront with the audience here so that I'm not misleading you in any way or leading you to believe that this is 110% proven before we get into it. I don't wanna misinform you. Now, just to be clear here and assert my bias, when it comes to privacy, I am of the belief that there are way too many violations of our privacy that we've become okay with as a society. I am not a fan of it, whether it is Google and all the stuff they do to make it so that it's opt out rather than opt in to basic elements of your privacy, which I've covered on this channel before, whether it's Facebook looking through your stuff, whether it's the, the government looking through your stuff and all the stuff that Edward Snowden talked about. I think a lot of people are on edge about privacy, and I think a lot of people have valid concerns when they're on edge about privacy. So when Apple announced that they were going to release a client-side system for their new iPhone operating system, this had a lot of people on edge. The idea is that they are going to compare and contrast images that you are syncing to iCloud on your iPhone with known CSAM. And because I don't want this video to end up on the bottom of an algorithmic ocean, I will leave you to Google what CSAM is and figure out for yourself what that is rather than state the obvious. So it'll compare and contrast those images to known CSAM. And if it is known CSAM and enough of it is known CSAM, they will then report it to the authorities. And there is this concern that, you know, that, that you're only going to get reported after someone reviews it. And someone else said, yeah, so it's definitely not going to be like that YouTube out thing where, you know, where you just have somebody in India hitting accept over and over again because they're overworked. Like, I don't know, let's say a video uh, where a video that I did a few years ago of Mr. Clinton meowing angrily was considered hate speech. But anyway. And I actually did get a strike for that a while back. I appealed it and I lost. Uh, so this here is interesting news. So this says, Apple Neural Hash reverse engineered Apple Neural Hash in ONNX and Python. It says here, as you may already know, Apple is going to implement Neural Hash algorithm for on-device CSAM detection soon. Believe it or not, this algorithm already exists as early as iOS 14.3, hidden under obfuscated class names. After some digging and reverse engineering on the hidden APIs, I managed to export its model, which is MobileNet v3 to ONNX, and rebuild the whole Neural Hash algorithm in Python. You can now try Neural Hash even on Linux. No pre-exported model file will be provided here for obvious reasons, but it's very easy to export one yourself following the guide I included with the repo above. And I will leave a link to this as well as the GitHub where all of this is posted for anybody who's curious and wants to try this for themselves down below. Now, what's really interesting here is that when Apple came out with this, you have to understand the way perceptual hashing works, it's not like MD5. It's not like, you know, the PAR2 files that you get when you download a file from Usenet to make sure it's 100% exactly the same as another file. Perceptual hashing is designed in a way where a file can be minorly different, but you're able to tell if it's the same general idea. So if two different people take a picture of me on their cell phone, the whole idea is that those pictures should be different enough that they don't have the same perceptual hash. However, if you take a picture of me on your cell phone and then, I don't know, you crop it, or you change the format, or you change the color of it in some way, that the perceptual hash should still be able to tell if it's the same file. And this is what they are using. They are comparing what it is you are going to be syncing to iCloud while it is still on your phone to known CSAM material. And again, please do Google what CSAM is. I'm not going to say what it is in this video for the obvious reason that the last time I did that, the video was uh, buried in an algorithmic ocean. Now, what's really interesting about this is that one of the main ways that Apple was saying that this is something that you know, you're not going to be able to reverse engineer, it's not going to be able to be used for bad things, it's not going to be able, you know, it's not going to have all these false positives, it's going to be really difficult of close to impossible for anybody to do something bad with, is that the, the whole basis for this, their implementation, was that they had gone to great lengths to make sure the model couldn't be reverse engineered. However, as my good friend Daniel Smolin says, if this is the same model, then it's been inverted. Anyone will be able to make innocent images appear as CSAM and vice versa. And also the fact that this was found in a released version of the operating system before it was announced is a clear indication that you can't trust Apple to not make unannounced changes. So this is really big news if it is true. And I want to be clear, there is an if, if it is true if we can trust this gentleman on Reddit that who has released this code, and if this is a proper reverse engineer of what Apple is using. If it is, then that's really freaky. And again, I'm just going to quote my good friend here who knows way more about this uh, than me. And he says, you're right, and that the way this is supposed to work is to generate a hash 
then match that hash against the database of known CSAM hashes. And the technology then mediates that matching is private set intersection. The reason why they've used this and not just encrypted the hashes, but rather done this more complex approach is to hide both the hashes, not just the CSAM, but the ones of the photos in your device. The reason for this is that if you have access to the model and you can ask it whatever you want, anytime you want, not mediated through this private intersection, you can do what's called a model inversion, where basically you keep probing the model in order to figure out what was used to train the model to produce the values that it does. You're inverting the output that it gives you in order to discover the input. If this is the same model that's trained on CSAM images in order to discover features which makes them distinctive as CSAM and not say just any other random image, like what they use to prevent false positives for any image that just loosely resembles the images in their database, you can discover that training data and potentially reveal the CSAM, at least insofar as revealing the essential features of the CSAM that makes these images distinct. So that is one problem. Now, again, we are getting into a conspiratorial thinking here. There's a lot of if that's involved, if what this guy posted is actually correct, if this is properly reverse engineered, and if this is a big if, someone gets their hands on CSAM that is known to be in this database. That is a lot of ifs. But as he says, being able to trivially modify images to completely avoid detection altogether presents an opportunity to evade detection, rendering the whole method useless. How do you do that trivial modification is what you can discover through model inversion, which is only possible if you have access to the underlying neural hash machine learning model, and that is now open for the world to see. So this is a big problem. And not only would the release of this make this pretty useless for many reasons. The first reason that it would be useless is that if you are in possession of something that is known to be part of this hash, you can figure out how to modify it in a way where it won't be caught. But B, it only detects known CSAM. It doesn't detect new CSAM. So if someone creates new CSAM, it's not going to be detected by this at all because it's only looking for known CSAM. But if you have known CSAM that's in this database, then you can use this hack to be able to figure out if that's, you know, if, if that's a part of it, which is, uh, this is just going down a road that I personally don't want to go down. And I get it. And one, you know, there are critics on this channel that have said, well, you know, Microsoft and Google are doing the same thing on their cloud servers. And listen, I don't like that this is being done anywhere. And I agree with you that if we are going to push back against this, we should have pushed back a long time ago before the scanning became client side. I agree with you. For many people, once they know that the scanning is being done client side, even if it's only being done for items that you personally chose to sync to the cloud database, that's the point at which it just crosses the line that makes it a little too weird for people. And I'm kind of curious what you all think of the fact that someone has released this. Do you believe that this is credible? Do you believe that this is a proper reverse engineer? Do you believe that this is similar code to what it is that Apple is using? And if it is, do you think that this is going to result in this entire system being rendered useless? Do let me know in the comments down below. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is more of a conspiratorial video. This is not something where I have perfect citations. It's not something where I can 110% prove that this is the exact same thing that they're using by any stretch of the imagination. I just found it interesting and I wanted to share it with all of you. So let me know what you think. And then that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And yeah, I don't have the camera on because I am in a hotel room with horrible lighting. And every time I use my camera in a hotel with horrible lighting, you all make fun of the fact that my face changed colors. And admittedly, I kind of got wasted at the bar downstairs, so <laughs> I don't feel like turning the camera on. Anyway, I will see you all later on. And uh, I'm going to be leaving Vegas. I'm going to be going back to lovely, beautiful New York City tomorrow, which I actually kind of like Vegas. I kind of I kind of like Nevada in general. It's a really nice state. Lovely people that I met here. Uh, you know, everybody seems to be f fairly cheery and really happy that they moved here. My the Uber driver had moved here from uh, California. I met some people that moved here from New York. And the people that I met in Nevada, some really nice people. I'm going to make sure to take some time to visit the state when I, when I do get time. Anyway, I will see you all later. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video.